Yeah, it's that kind of game. Yellow Taxi Goes Room is an indie title developed by Panic Arcade and published by those awesome guys. Yes, all of those title names are real. I promise you. While the game takes some inspiration from retro gaming formulas from games like Banjo-Kazooie and Crazy Taxi, it also feels like a Super Mario Odyssey without the jump button, giving the game a more modern twist. I also get Crash Bandicoot vibes from this game as well. But is Yellow Taxi worth taking out for a spin, or is it just another crash and burn indie title struggling to find its own identity? Let's find out. Hey, what's good y'all, it's Wavy, and welcome back to Whatever Wavy, where I upload whatever games are wavy to me within the games industry. And man, Yellow Taxi Goes Room is one hell of a video game, let alone the title of the game itself. I had a blast playing through this indie title and struggling through it for a little bit as well. And I wanted to showcase it to you all because I thought it was pretty cool. So here's the deal. You're a taxi, but not just any taxi. You're a toy taxi created by a short fat scientist named Morio. Morio isn't a plumber, nor is he a doctor, and there isn't a mushroom kingdom in this game. But we do fight this giant bomb in Bomb Beach. Anywho, there's this evil company called Tosla that's corrupting all of the world's oil with a weird energy coming from these green gears scattered all over the place. Looks like desperate times call for desperate measures for the electric giant, huh? Oh, never mind, never mind. In this game, Tosla is an oil company, not an electric company. We're tasked to teleport to different islands all around to collect these gears so we can eventually teleport to the main Tosla headquarters. And I gotta say, driving around for the first time takes a while to get used to. I don't know about you, but I've never really played a platformer where you're driving around the entire time. But man, does it feel satisfying in this game, I can't lie. You can move forward and backwards with the A and B buttons, but I personally use the left and right triggers for the entirety of the game for a more modern feel. This game knows exactly what it's trying to be, however. A 1990s platformer with some 2010s inspiration. That's why they allow you to play with CRT borders around the screen along with a CRT filter on top. Or you can go fully widescreen if you don't like all of that old crap toggled on. Honestly, I'd say you're just not a person of taste. As we hop into the first stage, Morio's home, we're immediately greeted with a lively color palette with pixelated clouds and polygonal ground textures made to be boosted off of. Not gonna lie, it kinda reminds me of Green Hill Zone with the checkered green grass and the clear blue skies. If you press the X button, you'll gain a quick burst of speed and dash forward. This is used to not only break open specific boxes, but also to boost off ramps and gain additional height. Remember, there's no jump button, so this is what we're going to be doing for the majority of the game if we want to get to certain places. However, if you double tap the X button, you can cancel your dash and do a mini hop in the air. Cancel it again and you'll hop a bit higher, kind of like a double jump. And if you cancel your dash with the left trigger instead, the taxi will do a little backflip which launches you even higher. I have an issue with this move, however, and we'll get to that later on in the video. After you collect a gear, it throws you right back into the action of the game, just like Super Mario Odyssey. If you're already turned off by the cutesy look and feel of this game and think it'll be too easy, think again. While some of these gears may be in plain sight, a lot of them will require you to think outside of the box and be a bit creative with how to get them. Same goes for the hats scattered across the map that you can purchase with coins. And the bunnies? Well, tch, those are even harder to get than the gears and the hats and all that. The thing I love about collectathon games like this is that there may be one specific way the developer requires you to collect the gear or... <sighs> Making videos in the hood, am I right? <laughs> the thing I love about collectathon games like this is that there may be one specific way the developer requires you to get the main collectible, like this one in the hub world, requiring you to get an invincibility spring and platform your way to it. I was struggling for a bit to do it legit, so I made up my own way of getting to it. Bars. And sometimes you may find a platforming obstacle that leads you somewhere unexpected, like this little cave in pizza time that got me to a green gear. Or these rubber ducks that led me to absolutely nowhere and caused me to lose not just 15 minutes of my precious time, but also over a thousand coins. So I took my anger out on some crabs underwater. Going back to pizza time though, stages like this, Bomb Beach, Morizio's City, I think I'm saying that one right, and even Morio's Mind, my favorite looking stage personally since it reminds me of Squidward's Dream from Battle for Bikini Bottom, stages like this are where the chaos really begins in Yellow Taxi Goes Room. It's also where this game gets its crazy taxi inspiration. The thing is, Morio is nowhere to be found on these stages to help you wind up your spring, so you have a limited amount of time to drive up to random pedestrians to crank that shit. Crank that 
But in return, you gotta do them a favor and drive them to anywhere they need to go as quickly as you can by any means necessary. And I mean any means necessary. I swear this game is age appropriate for your kids. A few moments later. All right, couldn't find an ESRB rating anywhere online, so let's just assume it's appropriate for kids. It isn't all just driving around, collecting coins and gears, and playing Uber Simulator 24, however. This game also has boss fights, like I said earlier, stealth missions, and even giant death beams shooting at you non-stop as you drive around tirelessly trying to make a livable wage enough to support your family in this overinflated world being ran by a corrupt corporation. <sighs> Well, one can only assume that's why Morio ended up in the taxi business anyway. You can tell this game tries not to be boring in any way possible by switching it up from level to level. One thing that's far from being boring is the arcade-inspired soundtrack. Driving around at high speeds, flying off ramps, and swerving around corners feels even more fun with the upbeat tunes that this game has to provide. When you're jumping around, collecting the same collectibles in each stage, and attempting the same jumps over and over again, some catchy songs always help to keep the energy up. And just like the last game we covered on this channel, Penny's Big Breakaway, character dialogue has some witty humor to it as well. From this stoner asking if we'll take some weird green stuff as his payment for his lift ride, to this bodybuilder calling us king every chance he gets. Yeah, Brody needs to cool it, actually. He's weirding me out. But I'm not gonna lie, these characters always have something weird to say and I just love it. This game doesn't take itself seriously in the slightest and you have to appreciate that, man. I mean, exploding sheep? Peanut butter? Or jelly time? Police instigating and preventing me from progressing in the game because I'm black? No, no, seriously, that actually happened in the game. And why not throw in a Goku Easter egg while we're at it? Even with the game announcer having this gamified voice every time we collect time or hit one of these reset bubbles in the game. This is a video ass game right here. But of course no game is perfect and there are some things that bothered me with my playthrough. For starters, boosting off ramps is pretty inconsistent. You kind of have to line yourself up in a specific way if you want to get the most out of your jump, but you, if you don't, then you'll just end up completely botching your launch. Speaking of launching, I don't like how this game teaches you that little backflip until later in the game. If you're gonna show us one way to cancel our dash and jump, why not just show us the other in the moment as well? Kind of feels like they saved it literally until the final stage to make it seem like you learned a new ability. And I didn't like that. Especially because I found out about the trick like way later on while I was playing by accident and I thought I found some hidden tech and was like, oh. Oh, I might be onto something. I might have to make a video on this. <laughs> yeah, boy. But no, the game just decided to wait until the last minute to teach you. It would have been nice early on to get to certain parts of the game, but now collectibles and i love a good collectathon but they have an issue with their own collectibles for starters there are a ton of them coins hats gears and bunnies all around but the only ones you can track while you're in a level are the gears for a collectathon this feels like a huge miss considering that it's retro inspired and games like banjo kazooie had this figured out by 98. makes sense that you don't track the coins though since you don't need to collect all of them for 100 percent completion in a level? If so, then why gray them out every time you enter a stage again? I get that they're used for hats, which those are literally the only purpose for the coins unfortunately. Hats. But there are a lot of them in this game, so I kind of get it. But I feel like this was a missed opportunity to have like a hundred coins collected to get you a hidden gear or something, kind of like Super Mario 64 with the a hundred coins in that game. But there are a lot of coins, so I kind of get it. But what I don't get is why you lose coins in the hub world. It's a hub world, and there are some gears that require you to go through certain obstacles that can time you out or cause you to reset and lose about 150 coins like the obstacle that i showed in the beginning of the video that i cheesed yeah i cheesed it because i kept fucking dying that that should never be a thing in games in my opinion what do the bunnies do i get that this game was dedicated towards somebody's bunny and no i'm not joking it's actually in the credits of the game or 
there in the credits of the game but there are three bunnies per stage what do they do i've collected three bunnies in many of these stages but i like nothing another missed opportunity in my opinion and i literally can't find anything about them on the internet either like a lot of things that i tried to search up on the internet about this game are just non-existent i guess it's still because this game is relatively new but yeah some kind of guide or some kind of hey you collect all the monies and you get a golden car or something, I don't know. And I know it sounds like I'm hating on the game at the end of this video, but I honestly love this game. And I'm so glad it came out in 2024. After all of the 30 plus hour AAA games that we've gotten as of lately, like, I'm good, man. Like, give me, give me something light. Give me something quick to get through and just have some fun. And that's exactly what Yellow Taxi Goes Room does. It's a nice breath of fresh air and it only took me seven hours to complete. It takes six hours total, but add an additional hour for the, all of the stages that I 100%ed. Short, sweet looking visually and cheap to at only $15, Yellow Taxi Goes Room is a n More sirens. Hey y'all, that's two sirens in one video. Now y'all see the bullshit I be going through trying to record videos in the hood. <laughs> That at least deserves a like or subscription as I'm trying to wrap up this video. Anyways, short, sweet looking visually and cheap to at only $15, Yellow Taxi Goes Room is another must play for any platformer fan out there who wants a fresh take on the classic genre while taking inspiration from some of gaming's greats. 2024 is a great year for indie games and this game is a prime example of what a fun ass video game feels like to play while knowing exactly what it wants to be and who it's for. And man, I highly Highly recommend you check out this game if you have the time and you if you have a PC or a Steam Deck. If not, fingers crossed it comes to consoles because this is the perfect Switch game. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, families, and relatives as it really does help the channel grow. What do you think about Crazy Taxi Goes Room? Is it a game you think you're going to be checking out or is it not your style, not your taste? Let me know in the comment section down below. But in the meantime, it's been Wavy and I'm going to catch you in the next one. Peace.